This week, First Lady Jill Biden tested positive for COVID. She is not alone. COVID cases and hospitalizations are on the rise here and across the country. In fact, a spike in COVID cases in some area schools has led to mask mandates in some classes. So why are the cases on the rise and what can we do to protect ourselves? Dr. Jeffrey Gold is a chancellor at the University of Nebraska Medical Center, and he's been in the forefront of COVID and other health issues. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, we appreciate your expertise. Uh, the first question is, what exactly is causing the this uptick in the latest cases of COVID. Things which include uh, the time and distance between people's last vaccination or previous infection when their immune system uh, starts to become a little slower in responding. Uh, it's due to the change in weather, back to school, uh, athletic events, social events, and people gathering indoors in, uh, in different types of settings. Uh, and of course, it's due to the new variants. You know, we've mm -hmm. seen an increasing number of new variants, uh, which every time there's a shift in the genetics of this virus, what we've learned is they become a little less uh, amnestic, meaning that uh, the, our vaccines are a little less effective and our previous infections do a little less good job in preventing uh, another infection. So that's a very real trend that we're seeing. Indeed it is. And so, of course, we're wondering who is most at risk now? Is it the groups that we've seen in the past that we, we've talked about, or is there a new group that's more susceptible to what's happening now? Uh, pretty much the same. Uh, you know, the statistics show if you just look at hospitalizations, uh, those that are over 60 and certainly those that are over 70 or 75, uh, people that live in long-term care facilities, but also much younger people uh, who are at high risk due to, uh, you know, a medical condition, some, perhaps some medications that they're on, such as high-dose steroids that weaken their immune system. And, of course, another high-risk group is uh, women who are pregnant, uh, not only for uh, their own health, but for the health of their newborn. So those are still the very high-risk groups that we're concerned about. You talked about this latest variant. Tell us more about it. What exactly is it? Is there a vaccine for it, or can we expect a vaccine for it soon? Well, there's just a recent report that shows that uh, while this uh, new variant that people are concerned about, uh, the so-called B2.86 uh, variant, uh, is of concern, and the reason is because of a large amount of genetic shift. But the recent report shows that neutralizing antibodies, that is to say the way our bodies fight that new variant, seems to be quite good on that previous infection, and previous infection, particularly when combined with vaccine, uh, seems to be able to be very effective in preventing this infection and certainly preventing serious illness and hospitalization. So what exactly are the recommendations for the COVID vaccine this year? Should you get this booster shot if you've had it in the past? Do you, are you okay? Or, or is it sort of like the flu shot now where you really do need to get it every year that there's a new uh, vaccine out? Well, that's certainly the way it's starting to look. You know, this new vaccine will hopefully be available perhaps even this week, if not the, the week following. It is certainly strongly recommended for those that are over 60, as I said earlier, people in long-term care facilities and people who are at high risk. But let's not forget also that we not only have a new flu vaccine that's available coming out uh, either uh, the next several days or within a week, and an RSV, right. respiratory syncytial virus vaccine, that's going to be useful for our very young and also for the older citizens uh, in our nation as well. So the sequencing of that is going to be very important. Doctor, I know there's some confusion out there. Can you take the cocktail of vaccines? I'm talking about the COVID, the flu, and RSV. Can you do a lot at once, or do you need to space them out or just do one and forget about the others? Well, you know, there are not good studies that show whether combining them or sequencing them over time is particularly helpful uh, or risky in one way or another. So what I tell folks is, you know, talk to your local healthcare professional. You know, what I plan to do is probably get one at a time, uh, maybe 10 days apart, uh, and see how that goes. Uh, but, uh, you know, everybody's different depending on your age, how far you have to travel to get your health care. Right. Certainly, there does not appear to be high risk of getting them all together. The question is, do you get exactly the same efficacy? All right. I know there's a lot of confusion, some questions. Hopefully, we've helped answer that for our viewers out there today. Dr. Jeffrey Gold, a chancellor at the University of Nebraska Medical Center, thank you so much for your expertise, as always. My pleasure.